Lady Verona. I'm glad you're here to start. Oh, do the things you gotta do. You'll get to see it. Twitch will hold on to the recording for a bit, and then I'll put it to Instagram, or Instagram, YouTube. That's, that's the right media, YouTube, um, and you can watch the recording. I'm kind of set up a little bit already, because I thought I'd be in more of a rush today, but um, my one o'clock appointment didn't show. Um, I'm trying to get out of my depressive slump, and what's the best way to do that but to contract someone to clean your house, because I don't want to do it. Um, <laughs> so I figure if I can get the house clean, maybe, maybe I'll pull out of the depressive slump. Um, but so far the first two I've scheduled with to do an estimate, no, no, uh, they did not show. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, coolness. Also exciting news this week, maybe at least for me, is I found my watch. It was in the couch. We found it looking for the remote. Um, it's kind of nice. Uh... I mean, I've always liked it. It counts my laps for me when I swim, but I, I also, with all the hand washing I'm doing so frequently with COVID and being in the classroom, um, my skin like starts to disintegrate, crack, bleed and stuff under it. Um, hence why I'm also not wearing any rings anymore. Um, so I'm excited for that, but it has this nice little graphic on it, you know, of the dog in the burning house that says this is fine, and it does. So it has the time, but also every once in a while goes, this is fine, because that's how I feel right now. And that's how I feel right now. Um, things are busy today. I am going to have to limit this to an hour. I don't know how else to get everything else done today. Um, I mean, an hour as in I need to be done at 2.30. So you, you guys got a little extra time because my one o'clock didn't show. So, um, coolness. Let's see, to start off, um, I'm going to show you a few things from my trip. Uh, just some slow-mo video that my partner uh, caught and some video of me. And then the reference image I'm going to use for this painting. This is probably going to be a two-hour painting. I have an hour to work. It's going to be a good thing to go because it's a really foggy image. So I'm going to need some drying time between my paint layers. So you're going to get one hour of this really focused something or the other. Um, let's show you. Are you, ready? Are you ready for that? Are you ready for this? Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, here we go. I, uh, I did a thing. Um, I, I made, I made, uh, a folder in my Google images, in my photos to show you some things just to set the mood for you. I thought, you know, some of these would be nice. These are just like one second videos that just kind of give you a mood of like how it was when we were out there and how empty the mountain really was. I know repeats no fun, but you get the idea. Um, so let's see this one. This is what it was also like. Same lift. So this is the Burgess Creek lift line um, that runs. Ooh, that didn't happen in my tests. Uh, <laughs> I did test it. I was like, ooh, people are going to like this. Um, I tested it. It uh, maybe failed. Let's try again. Let's show you more of that Burgess Creek lip line at Steamboat, Colorado. Um, cool. Thanks, Google. How about you? Is this one going to play? Hey, so a little bit of slow-mo. Like, it's like glitter in the air. Like, the snow is... It was so light, it was falling down and up and around. It was just kind of lovely. Um, that was real. Here's me on a ski lift. Yep, that's me. Do you need to see more? That That's me right there. That's me. That's what I look like when I'm skiing. <laughs> uh, so here I am with the blue hat that I made. Um, I've got my lightweight face gator on. Um, it just kind of keeps the cold from being awful on my skin. Got my goggles on. I got my apex boots, which are snowboard boots with a skeleton so you can clip them into skis. Um, and I'm holding my poles like a relaxed, chill person. I look very relaxed here. And those are my grandmother's poles that she skied with like 20 years ago or more. Probably more. Probably more. Okay? They're lightweight. Those are her poles. Um, so yeah, that's what I look like when I'm skiing. Uh, and then um, this moment happened while I was skiing that made me go, what? So I'm going down, this looks like probably Buddy's Run. Um, 
or rain, pr pr probably Buddy's Run. Um, so it's like to the side uh, four points hot. Uh, it looks like I'm just below calf rope. Uh, probably headed, actually I remember this moment, I'm headed towards Vortex, I think. I think I'm headed towards Vortex or Dropout uh, to meet my dad and my partner. And it was, it was, it's, you know, you can see the tree line right there, or the, the cloud line right there. And so, like, the cloud line is just hovering right below me. So I can see things that are close to me, like the trees you see. But then the bottom of the cloud is right there, right there. Can you see that? Right here is the bottom of the cloud. And then this little hole opened up, and it just kind of looked like the valley was just floating in the sky right at my eye level. And I was like, what is going on here? And so I was like, I need to capture this. So I stop, I take out my phone, and I don't do that all that often on the slopes. I'm not the one taking most of these photos. But this moment of this valley like floating by me basically was happening. It was really just clouds in a hole, but it, it, because of the depth, because the clouds were so flat, it just kind of opened up. And I wanted to capture this. And I was like, I'm going to paint this one. I can't sit here and do it. It's too cold. There's not enough sun to keep me warm. But here it is, this, this, this moment. And it turns out, you guys are going to find this really rather funny. Um, it turns out, so here's my close-up shot of it. There we go. Here's the painting, right? Here's the painting. Nice, you know, it, there, there's a lot going on here that kind of makes it out, you know, it's got a funky shape. It, it can droop like this. Amazingness, right? This this could work. And I, I might even include those skiers because those little dots of colors down at the bottom make these beautiful moments. Um, and so here I am like looking at this and it turns out two runs over is a friend of mine capturing this image. <laughs> um, so I think they were a little bit higher than I was. So the opening was just a little more leveled out. So we're looking at the same opening in the clouds at the same valley kind of below us, not even kind of below us, but it looks like it's floating above us, but it's really below us as we stand on the slope and they've captured this different assortment of trees. So one of these is gonna be the reference image for what, we're, what I'm about to do today. Um, obviously this, um, <laughs> this, is, this is gonna be a little on the hard side, okay? because this is gonna really play with depth a lot when I paint this. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go. This could fail miserably, I'm serious. This could really fail miserably. So to help me think through this process, here's an image of me getting off a chairlift. I, I didn't wanna add too many images of my crew. Um, I didn't wanna invade their privacy, but here I am. Look at that confidence coming off. I know, I'm just so relaxed. I'm like, yo, what up? I, I don't need any help here. I'm just chilling, getting off a lift. Easy peasy, right? <laughs> so it was a colder day, you can tell, because I'm in my heavyweight pants and I've got the hat like on, on, and um, yeah, you know, I'm just like chilling. And I got my like heavyweight gloves on along with my snot saver. Look at me sporting that pink skull snot saver that I made on the stream with you all. Aren't you proud of me? Anyways, so there are some highlights from my vacation definitely stretching it out. Um, so let's talk about which image we think will be best to paint. There's some advantages and disadvantages here. Um, like, I like the clarity in this image. I feel like I focused on the valley um, and that was really helpful in the capture. The irregular shape could be interesting and I love the, the, the curve of the slope. Like it really captures that. And that might be really important to me for this capture. Um, and then, for this, this watercolor painting, and then, um, you know, and then we can look at my friend's capture over here. I think, it, I think John captured this one. Um, the valley is a little more eye level. It's a little higher. Um, the clouds feel a little darker. I, maybe, maybe I need to paint both. Maybe that's what needs to happen here. What do you guys think? Um, I just might have, let's see. This one open. This one's this one's open. I got to take a layer off of this one because I've got a little here. It's a little right here. Um, all right, all right. This is not impossible. This is not impossible at all. Uh, let's. I'm gonna adjust my screen so that I have you guys hanging out on my right here, and then I'm gonna pull up the the image I'm gonna paint on the left, and then everything's here. Let's pull this off. Um, I'm going to do start with a knife to pull this image off or pull this uh, piece of illustration board off and then um, 
and then maybe I'll paint both. Maybe that's the way to save this and, you know, that it's only going to be an hour today. Um, so this is my hot glue uh, brick or block making technique. Um, it's a good one. It actually works and they've held up for a little, oh, I pulled two pieces off. That's no good. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna pull two pieces off here. Um, you really, really should, I should be slipping something thinner under here, but I'm just using my finger because I'm being lazy. Here we are, a piece of paper to work with. Ugh, you know what, it's not even, like, the hot glue isn't even staying on. Like, that's not gonna hold down. I'm gonna have to heat that back up. Um, we're gonna use the hot iron technique because my iron's right here. Uh, it'll be all right. We'll use the side of it. Yeah, um... Hold on, I gotta get to it. <laughs> All right, unplug and plug it back in. I don't know why, but this is what it requires to turn back on after it's been sitting for a minute. Um, I gave a demo last night uh, for my adult art class where I drew a crumpled piece of paper as, uh, as we wait for the iron to heat up, where I drew a crumpled piece of paper as a shrubbery for your viewing pleasure. Um, you know, here we are. I drew that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're just going to wait for that iron to heat up a smidge. I'm going to really lock these bad boys down, um, and do these little itty bitty paintings, huh? Um, watercolor is my choice of media here for a number of reasons. I just am very experienced in it. I've been doing it since I can remember. Heck, I can remember... Um, you guys, you guys know Bob Ross, right? Right? So I was homeschooled, so Bob Ross, like, was my art <laughs> growing up a lot of the time. Um, so, uh, I would follow along with his oil painting, uh, tutorials while, um, while using watercolors. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, I really caked on those watercolors uh, to the point that they were practically tempera. Uh, but it, it did not work. Um, I don't recommend that technique. Um... Just, if you're looking for new things to try, it's not that. Um, you see what I'm doing here? So I've got the, probably not really well. Here's the iron, here's the thing. I'm gonna press it together so that it melts and then let it cool. Come on, iron. You turned down way too far. You might be turned down way too far. There's my problem. Okay, give it a second. Sorry, can I vamp some more? Uh, we'll find out. Um, I pre-sprayed my watercolors here because I wanted them to be soaked and good for you guys. Um, ooh, now there's heat coming off of it. My pencils are here. I'll probably be drawing with a 3H to a 4H pencil just to lock in those lines a smidge. Um, I want to, yeah, uh, I, I don't want to have to deal with a lot of erasing and stuff. There we go. Now it's melting. I can see it happening. Um, just melting it and shoving it into the pages here. That helps. Ugh. and I'm gonna have to clamp it back down. But I've got my clamps right here as if I'm ready and thinking about this all the time. So heat that back up. I had to do this in Colorado to a Soviet era um, iron <laughs> that had been to the Soviet Union. Um, I just might show you guys more about that one day. Um, if you're really, really lucky, you'll get to learn more about that. Okay, so I am melting this down so that it really attaches to that page, scooping it up, and then I'm going to clamp it down so that we don't lose the adherence, you know, so that everything sticks, okay? Just so that everything sticks. Um, yeah, like, book binding glue is probably the better choice here, but it's not like I have any of that. Do you? Um, here, pass it to the screen for me. Uh, anyways, it's been a while since I made that joke. Okay. Now, are these really on there? So that one looks a little loose. I'm going to melt that in and then clamp it down so it dries, dries, cures, whatever, you know, hot glue sets. All right. I'm feeling this one. Okay. So I've got two blocks of bricks. All right. And we're going to turn this to off. So I can peel the hot glue off of it when it cools. I'm gonna unplug it just to make sure it turns completely off. There we are. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay, now we're gonna put the clamps away. 
because I have a spot because my people have been working very hard to make sure I get more organized and pull out of my depressive slump. Um, uh, this is not helpful. So, oh, there you go. This one's on the bottom, so I'm assuming it's a little more cool. Look, look there's some there's some glitter in there because I did happen to use a hot glue that maybe had glitter in it. You know, because that's who I am. Um, inspecting the edges. Yeah, I'm feeling good about this. So this will be the first one. And the first thing I'm going to do is really just lay down some gross general, not gross as in ew, but like gross as in like profits, um, color layout. And then, um, I don't know. I don't know how to approach this 100%. I got to make some colors though. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to pull up my Arches Cat Tongue Brush because that's my favorite. And I'm going to either make, yeah, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a really neutral looking gray here for this. Um, I'm going to switch my camera view so that you guys get everything you've ever wanted, including the conversation. Um, and I'm going to make a neutral gray for this cloud color. Um, I'm pulling up this brown color right over here. Can you see me mixing that? Yes, that's lovely, lovely. I think this is going to be the secret to making this color. I know, right? There's a secret to making the perfect grays. Um, and then I'm going to pull from... Do I see green in that cloud? I do not. I really see like a pure blue in there, just a little. Not a lot, but enough. Um, that's too much. That's called a lot. That was that was a dramatic change. That's, well, it's not wrong. Uh, more of that brown back in. And this is it. <laughs> All right. This is the gray I wanted to make. Cool. Um, so I made the gray. I thought that was going to take longer. I really did. Okay, let's do our sketch then. Um, give me at least a two, three H. Here we are. And here is the pencil sketch about to begin. I am currently looking at the other person's image, not my image that I took that day. Um, and let's see if I can kind of describe the composition here in line. And it's, it's definitely going to look a little bit like a ski slope, like something you could ski down. I'm hoping I capture that this is has depth to this image. Oh, that's wrong. Ah! Okay, I need my eraser. Needed eraser here that you don't rub the page with because we don't want to ruin our paper texture. Was the screech a little dramatic? It might have been. It might have been. Um, so what I got going on here is really this this kind of sloops. Sloop. I'm sure it's a technical word. Sloops over here. This kind of pulls forward here. I don't really need to define the edge because placing the tree will do that for me. Um, cool. And it is more narrow than I really gave it credit for over here even. So you get that winding, like turning of a, of a ski slope. Okay. Now how tall, so if that's, that's, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, and this is my trees over here, and then I get some like trees coming up here-ish. Yeah, because they're closer. That's the basic placement of them. Um, we'll get some details through those trees because like they're at they're 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 the aspens, right? There's a, a pine tree shore right here, and that's gonna like really define the edge of this canvas. That's a lot of tension right there, but I'm okay with it. Um, and that'll really help if, if I can erase what I did here. Ah, okay. Um, and then this one starts with like a pine tree here that goes up almost singularly. It's awkwardly almost in the center of my canvas. Uh, and then there's like a little tree here, but it's, it's a deciduous tree. And then um, 
more here and another pine tree, much smaller one here. And yes, I am defining these things now because um, this is a different kind of tree. I don't, this is, well, it's an evergreen, but I, it's, it's sloping different. It's got like slope to it. Um, and it's right here and it's slanted. And then we have what appears to be a, a beetle kill tree right here that's really going up high into this canvas. Like this tree is close to us, it's real, it's there. Um, and right here's another one that doesn't quite go as tall, but it's there. Another deciduous, right? Um, and there's another like little itty bitty deciduous here that I hope I can adequately define but it looks like it's been pretty beat up. Like it looks like it got skied over a bunch because it probably did because in higher ski years, it probably is more buried. Um, so yeah, here we are. And uh, so that's, that's pretty convincing, I feel like. Okay, and then, so these deciduous trees that are hanging out here do form a deeper gray through here um, just like this does and then these are hanging out over here actually this could be the painting in of itself maybe we won't include the floating sky um, I don't know okay where is the floating sky <laughs> so right here is a slope of the the floating sky I don't know how I'm gonna do this this makes no sense um, Cool, with a bunch of lines going through it that are like the edges between the the fields in the valley I think or the edges of roads um, and then like there's a hill here I'm bringing all of this way too close to the edge I can tell already maybe I should have chosen a larger canvas um, Either way, this is that little bit that opened up in the sky. Okay, I'm not defining either edges. It's not becoming a window to the sky. I don't know what this is gonna do, but we're gonna try it, okay? Um, no promises that it'll be lovely, no promises that it'll be perfect. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do it, okay? Um, mix our, our colors together nicely. I'm using the cat tongue brush right this second, um, quite on purpose, and The whole thing has to have some kind of gray on it, okay? And we're gonna really throw that on there. In order to define the cloud a little bit, we're gonna need this. Now, if I can control where the water goes, keep your fingers crossed, um, it will get d darker towards the horizon, unlike the painting I did the other day that um, was clearly uh, lighter towards the horizon. Um, and maybe that's how we know that there are clouds in the sky, um, is that, is that the, the, the gradient kind of changes. There we go, that's not too bad. Cool. And the gradient is definitely at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna bring it up over here just a smidge. The paint isn't wanting to stick completely. I've probably got something on this. Cool, there's the cloud. Okay, it worked, y'all. <laughs> um, now let's bring it to the edge without being too liney. You know, I don't want to be all about the lines. Um, okay. And it is very gradual. There's very little definition. Like, I got nothing in here. Um, I'm going to take that gray I made and we're going to shift it slightly bluer using um, the Prussian blue. Throwing that into this color will make for some fun. Yeah, decidedly more blue. And then I'm going to shade this slope just a smidge so that we understand more of what's going on here. It's a little on the dark side. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's there. I'll probably dab it up a smidge. 
so that we get and there's like this it's kind of mogul-y I'm looking at it and it's it's mogul-y so not 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 the character from Woodyard Kipling's book but um, the bumps the bumps that you ski on are called moguls okay I need a paper towel and I want to dab that up because that got heavy real fast and the uneven pulling up of the color with the tissue like this is is a beautiful technique it does good things see that not bad um so you want to see where it is is that good maybe I should bring my field of view in a smidge yeah can you see it? Probably not because of my logo. That's a better spot, huh? At least for this camera. It's not for this one. I can bring that camera in though. Better? Okay. Um, <laughs> now we're at the stage where it needs to dry. And so I was like, maybe I should do two paintings here. Okay. Uh, we're going to let this dry. I'm going to put it, set it aside right here so you can kind of watch it. And I'm going to put this one right here. And we're going to pull up that other photo um, that I took. And this one's going to be a little different. And we're going to try and get it smaller this time. Uh, kind of step back, see more of the slope, um, and capture what it is we're doing. Oh, and I should take pictures. You know what? I didn't take pictures last time, so I couldn't put them in my BioSide Creative Instagram. Um, I need to put the pictures in my Instagram so that um here we go i'm gonna do it and, and i've learned that my instagram photos do best if my palette is in them so just saying i'm gonna try and get the palette in them uh <laughs> but people like my palette it looks old school what does that mean i guess i'm getting old because i don't recognize it as old school anyways all right so now i'm gonna start the second image while this one dries okay and we have a half hour left in today's stream so you're this is this is speed painting okay like i said i was gonna do this fast let's draw this line i'm gonna exaggerate the slope a smidge um but only a smidge because oh bring it down a little more there we are People are getting used to these images with like curved um, horizon lines uh, because of like all around camera type stuff, 360 cameras, um, which is cool, which is cool. I'm glad they're used to it. That's not what's happening here. I am not using a 360 camera of any sort or type. Um, this is the curve of the slope. And so, you know, on the sides, there's often these like little jumps and I wanna make sure to get that little jump because it's kind of adorable. I love that little jump. Um, and then there's, you know, more going down here. It's not quite that big. Um, all the best spots to jump, they've really put signs that say slow down, which is really annoying. <laughs> do I, do I sound like a punk kid? Um, there you go. In five minutes, I can, you know, sound like a punk kid and, um, and an old footy duddy in the same moment. So here we are, I'm, oh, can you see, you probably can't see, here we go. Um, so I'm adding these little details at the edges and then there's this, it comes in over here and it keeps, cause it's getting much further away. So it, it, it gets together and then, and it's getting fuzzy. It gets fuzzy and that's, that's what tells me stuff is going on, yo, stuff is going on. Um, there's these like two little pines right here and, and again, I think I'm looking at what is basically the entrance to Vortex and Dropout um, at the top of Steamboat here. Not the top. It's not really the top. Like, the top is a misnomer. Above. Above. And um, there's these, like, little veins of snowiness, grassiness, tree. It's not grassies. It's trees. Um, deciduous trees. It's just that they're so far away they kind of look like grasses. This tree is more defined. But these over here are starting to get fuzzy because that cloud, it, that, the edge of that cloud, like we, we talked about earlier, is right there. Um, and we got to be ready for it um, and the fading of these trees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this adorableness is happening right here. And then over here, see, I think I'm not even going to get to the sky part. Like, I'm just so fascinated with the slope. Okay, let's rethink this. Um, 
adding a little more over here I mean it is very fuzzy over here it is just fuzzy there's a pine tree I can see right there there's a pine tree like right here but it's just fuzzy slope over here as it fades away and goes into the fuzz of the world the fuzz of the world um don't say okay got it here we go the deciduous trees that are kind of marking the slope over here um and they pop out they puff out right here they are very on the puffy side they won't be in my painting they will be appropriate and then they kind of do this number and they're in front of some of these more deciduous or more um, evergreen trees rather so we got these two taller narrow ones that just kind of get lost in the deciduous trunkiness and then this one just kind of begins to emerge itself it's a little more defined it must be a little further forward and I think there's like must be a little path through here because it gets a little open and then the dis the, the, the I keep doing that the deciduous then the evergreen just kind of the pine tree pops right back through here really well defined with lots of happy snow on its branches okay and that's the slope um, way down and um, there is a, a dude in red right here and I feel like I want to include him there's like a dude in upside down yellow right here I want to include them then there's this like woman in like teal over here. I'm gonna pull her down so she stands out against the trees. I say woman because I think I know what the colors are that they marketed the ski equipment that year, this year. Then there's this really itty bitty yellow person here. Bright, bright yellow. This yellow is gonna repeat. This is the opposite of this person. And then we've got this like triangle wedge guy going down the mountain. You know, a real noob. You gotta start somewhere. Okay. And now we're going to open up the sky. Okay, in reality, this open window was over here somewhere, but I'm going to add it right here. And we're going to do this gray thing again. Um, and it's going to be the funky shape that it is. Yas, funky, funky cloud opening. Um, cool. Just like that. And so if we can get the sky really flat gray, I think we'll understand what's going on. Um, and then, um, so in that funky opening, we've got the, the slopes down below in the valley, right? And there are these moments that we need the details of. And they're probably roads and that kind of thing. It's probably Emerald Mountain, you know, the, the mountain I painted the last time. When you're up on the mountain, Emerald Mountain is just what you see. Um, uh, it just is. Uh, you're always looking down at it. You're above it and just enjoying life up there. There we go. Just little bits over here. It just kind of has this fluffy feeling to it. It's going to be really interesting to try and capture this and lay that snow that's in the valley behind the cloud. Um, but we're going to try, okay? We're going to try our darndest to get this in here there we go and that's it so now I'm gonna I'm gonna lay down well I'm gonna pick up some of this because this needs to fade so I don't want there to be a strong line there so I'm gonna pick up where I want there to be some good fading um, and everywhere the cloud is there's gonna be fading and edge blurring um, it's true and then I'm just going to have to work off a memory of what I drew here. Yeah? Here we go. I take a picture because that's what I do for my Instagram. Oh, yeah. Got to get the palette in there because my images do better if the palette's in it. Um, okay. Let's, let's lay that. Let's lay that color down. A little bit of that blue has seeped into this, but that's okay. I'm okay with this, this cloud looking a little different because it is a, a mildly different view. Now, as I look at this image, 
it's actually kind of darker on the side and like this rather than this flat straight bottom like it is here. So I'm going to lay that color right here and just really lay it on strong, okay? And then I'm going to fade out from that using water. Oh, let's throw that paper towel back in there because I've already thrown Where did it go? I swear I had a paper towel. I have a rag here. You saw me go get that paper towel. I put it in a pocket. I don't know what I did. Okay, I have a rag. Should be using a rag anyways, but it has hair on it and then I left it behind. Anyways, okay. Picking that up. Now, uh, really throwing that water back in so that this kind of fades out from where we were talking. Um, I'm worried about these lines, I just realized. Being a little too something. Embedded in. Okay, let's pick up a little more of that gray. That very special gray that we made. And we're gonna just let it blend through here, like this. And this is, and so remember, when you're working with watercolor like this, it's always darker on the page um, when it's wet. So don't freak out if it's getting too dark. I do that a lot, and then I end up having to multi like blend and and do more work because of that. Um, it's a weakness I have, and if it's a weakness you have, um, just remember this is darker than it's it's ultimately going to be. Um, There we go. So we can see that gray just kind of floating in and around that image. Now I want to get some gray even up to the clouds, even if it's not a lot, because that white in there is going to have to be pure white. I can't figure another way around it um, in order to really sell that, that valley aspect to it home. And we'll catch those little clouds that are in front of everything. How are we going to define that? I'm really not sure. We'll figure it out though, okay? I gotta, you gotta believe in me, and I'll believe in me, and we'll get it, okay? But as de described and defined, this gray really hovers up over here quite a bit. Cool. Um, now we're going to talk about that slope. It really does fade into itself, uh, fade into the cloud rather. So I'm going to pick it up right here and help it blend with just some water and blend it into that slope. And then I'm um, using a smaller brush. No, not smaller brush. I give up. No, no, I don't give up. I'm changing my mind. Um, I'm going to pick up some more of that color. And I'm gonna define that little ski jump bump thing that we we had happening, because um, it's it's defined in that same color. There we are, and it's coming out more blue. Cool. So we're gonna have to use a little more blue everywhere. Excellent. Um, nice. We're going to add some liquid to pull that through. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling this one. Um, I'm going to throw some over here too, because this is snow color. So if there's a little more blue in it, that'll show up for me. Okay, <laughs> now we get to set this one aside to let it dry. This is the only way I can figure to get the cloud cover like convincing. And we'll put it over here to dry, okay? Um, now we pull the other image up. I know. Am I, is this, is this annoying? Am I helping? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that turned out real nice. Look at that. Look at how that cloud is really just kind of settling in there. It's beginning to fade. Um, I'm happy with that. Let's start laying in, um, what, what is the valley? Uh, so we're going to need to make a new gray. We're going to avoid the colors we used before. And um, I want these colors to deaden quite a bit. So I'm going to play with 
this brown over here. It's a little darker. I'm hoping it will deaden a little bit. Um, we may need to throw some green into this instead of the blue this time um, to really kill that color. Um, so I'm going to pick up that green and we're just going to, oh, it turned out way too green. Okay, see, that's too alive. That color is way too alive. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, maybe if I like do something funky. Funkified. Here, we'll move the palette. What am I doing? What am I doing? Here we go. That color is way too alive. Can you see that? Way too green. Um, so we're going to grab some like brick red-ish and throw that in there. Um, there we go. Dead in that color. Uh, that's looking pretty dead. It's still very warm. Um, we need to cool it down a little bit. So I need a cool brown. Maybe just the brown I was using is the right one. Hmm. So cool brown. Let's pull up this one. That is a cool brown. So mixing that in. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah, this is it. That's the color. Okay, and so in the center of this cloud is where the most color really um, happens because it's fady it's it's blurry right so i'm gonna start my colors here and let them set there for a second and then we're gonna pull them out and let them fade into non-existence Okay, see those colors? We've thrown them down already. I'm gonna pick them up, watch this. I think this is gonna work. Oh, I hope this works. Okay, so I don't mind the little blurring, the, the texture that's occurring. Um, okay, well, I kind of mind that, but that's okay. Um, that's not what I planned. Cool, let's work with it. Pull it out over to here and over to here because it needs to fade away. And this needs to fade away. Okay, so we're just owning those tree textures and just blending them into the cloud. I think that's what we're doing here. Yeah, see, look, it's a valley. Does it look like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is working. I told you this was gonna be a real challenge. Um, let's take a smaller brush and pick up a little more of the color and then drop it in the center to help define some of these things, huh? with more clarity. There we are. Let it fade and blend into that cloud. Yeah, see, 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 it, it's a plan. It's a plan, it makes sense, I think. I don't know, somebody tell me. There we go. What time are we at? Okay, we got like 20 minutes left. We'll see how far I can take this, huh? Really throwing some detail into this, the, the valley. I don't even know if this is working. Like, is this gonna work? Is this gonna be a technique that I'm like, cool, nice, this is, I love this. I have no idea. Sometimes you just don't know. Um, okay, so looking at this, the next thing I'm gonna do, so it's gonna be a similar color to what I just made. And, but actually it's gonna, it's gonna cool down a bit. So we're gonna take some of that color, throw it over here, Grab that Prussian and add it in. Ooh, that's way too cold. Okay, grab those two browns that I was pulling from earlier. Throw those in. And let's see what we come up with with that Prussian. See, there it is. It's a very similar color, but it's, it's on the darker side, yeah? And um, 
now I'm gonna kind of blend these in. So here's the hard part. I know, you're just thinking, this is the hard part, I know. Um, I'm looking at this image and it's, it, the, the whites of the trees are still there. And they're equal to at least the cloud's grayness. So how do, how do I keep this white? Not sure, I'm not sure. Um, I gotta think. Uh, I'm gonna throw some more water into this to lighten it up so that if I make these mistakes, it'll be okay. Um, I'm remembering my choices. So I'm just kind of laying these colors down in a gradual way. And um, they do seem to gray out a little bit in the distance. That's just life with this stuff. And then um, they have some darker points. Now over here, again, it's fading even more, so give me more water. Painting in layers, man, that's that's all this is really coming down to, is, is making sure we're painting in these layers. Um, and, you know, of course it's going to be darker and more defined down closer to the ground where I am, because I can see more going on. Um, but it really begins to fade as it goes down the slope. Yeah, this paper is not as good as the arches. I mean, you guys know I'm an arches fan, so it's it's no shouldn't be any surprise. Um, you know, this is something I forgot that I actually did a lot with my watercolors is always having more than one going because you can let it dry and then go back to, and do the other one and work on the other one while you wait. Um, this is reminding me of things I used to do because it does, it takes a while, doesn't it? Um, so adding some darkness, because this is some of the, the closest stuff to me right here. So adding some darkness and letting it run, okay? I'm trying to, like, be a better watercolor artist and, like, let it be what it wants to be. Uh, letting it run a little bit. I'm not always the best at that, because I, I like to control things. But there's something about um, letting it go that I need to I need to work on. Um, cool. <laughs> I'm not hating it yet. All right, let's take a look over here at the second painting. What's it doing? This is a little harsh of a line here. I don't like that. I'm gonna throw some water on it and pick it up. Yeah, like that. Um, should we use the same valley colors? Uh, technically, it's the same valley, and it's the same hole in the cloud, right, that we, we were looking at. Um, it might be even just a little more intense. Yeah, same color. Uh, we're going to take the smaller brush, though, because I've learned a few things. And, um, again, it's going to be the darkest in that center point, right? Uh, and then it kind of fades. There we go. See, believe in yourself. I believe in myself. I don't know. I mean, this could turn out horribly. I'm t telling you I'm believing in myself while I'm like really, really questioning whether I'm making the right decisions here. But um, this could turn out horribly. But you know what? That's that's the thing. As, as an artist, everything's an experiment until you say it's not. Um, so don't hate on yourself for doing an art thing that doesn't work out. Um, that's my philosophy for you today. I think, I, I feel like I've said that like a lot, but it doesn't always stick to people's heads. You're back, hi Lady Ferona. I'm, uh, painting two watercolors at the same time so I have time for them to dry in between. Um, and trying to do it well. Um, I, I don't know how much longer I'll be on. No, I do. I, I have like 
10 minutes basically left um, in, in my ability to stick around. Um, but uh, there was this really cool moment when I was out skiing that like just kind of spoke to me and spoke to another person. We took the same photograph at the same time of this hole that appeared in the cloud um, as we were looking down at the valley. <laughs> and um, so I thought I would attempt to paint that hole in the cloud um, from both perspectives, really. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And because I need drying time in between on these really tiny canvases, um, it's it's really helpful to uh, <laughs> work on two at the same time. Uh, now I'm going to bring up an even smaller brush. I do love the long line brushes. They're something I often gravitate towards. Um, but I, the, the precision of the tips, actually I'm going to take the other long line. I want to take my uh, number two here. And because the valley is going to be the clearest and the points furthest from the cloud edges. Um, because the cloud edges are blurry. It's like the experience that happened, like the heavens opened up and the valley below was lit. And I wonder, I wonder if it did one of those like ray of sunlight thingies um, that you often see um, in like wide open plains where you can see forever, where the clouds just kind of open up and the sunlight pours through. I wonder if that's what it looked like to everyone else below. I've always wondered what it looked like, wondered what it looked like to be in one of those things. I didn't think it looked like this. I don't think this is what happened here. I don't, I really don't. Um, but it, it could be, it could be. Do, do, do. So just a little clarity on this valley down below, blurring it towards the edges because the cloud, the cloud, the mist, the water moisture in that cloud just kind of defined the whole scene. I really don't know if it's going to come through though. Um, whoop. So the tilt of this is causing me some problems. Let's tilt it this way because I want those pigments to gather there and not where it was gathering. Oop, I got a drop. Okay, we're good. Right in the middle there. Okay. Um, that's not a bad valley. I have to say so myself. Yeah. And then there was light. Yeah, I don't know. I remember things like that. Um, so just picking up on some of these textures and details really pulling through this is the detail in the valley down below it was beautiful but we got to send it back it can't be more vibrant it can't be more amazing than what was actually like happening up close because colors as they fade off into the distance become less vibrant okay it's just this like little open moment in the sky <laughs> steady your hand eh I don't know sometimes I shake and I worry you know my grandma's got the whole Parkinson's thing going on and I gotta say I worry a little bit just a little bit uh, let's pull I mean, it really was that same color that I, I pulled and used lightly through the trees here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. It's the same colors as are in the valley because it's the same trees. It's the same species. So we're going to see if we can drop some of that shading into here and really clarify what's happening. I'm trying to let myself go and use the, the, the painting media as it was meant meant to be used. Um, I have a tendency to like to control it way too much. Surely everyone understands that. Yeah, we'll keep doing this. Keep blending it out. And that's the nice thing about watercolors. You don't have to like add white or another color to blend it. Just add water and it just really blends, blends on out. Um, and sometimes my best watercolor moments are the ones where I was like rushed and let it go and didn't go back and fix it. Um, like in my, the hot air balloon paintings I did, like there are a lot of bloppy, blotchy um, hot air balloon 
ness, um, but it, it totally comes together. Like I see tons of blockage when I look at these hot air balloons, but they totally come together. You know what I mean? Um, so much blotchy, but they look like hot air balloons. So where's the problem? Um, oh, see, this is a lovely moment that's happening right here. Oh, and you can't even see it. Here, I'll switch views. Here we go. Lovely moment happening. Do, do, do. Um, lovely moment happening right here. Yeah. I like that. And if I can work with it, maybe I'll be a better artist. That's what it comes down to, is I just want to be the best, better, best artist ever. No, I just want to make a living doing this. I don't even have to be the best. Like, screw that. Nobody's going to call me the best. But, I got a cloud. Okay, let's, um... I'm gonna give this a second to dry, and then I'm gonna pull this in. Um, and I wanna add some details to that faraway valley um, because I learned some things on the other one. So if we add some detail up in here, I think people will be more convinced that this is what's happening. Here we are. Cool. I am kind of getting to a point though that I just gotta let them both dry. So, <laughs> um, you like to squint your eyes? Yeah, this is gonna be a little more on the blurrier side, I think, unless I, I mean, keep layering up and keep working it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a valley through the eyelashes, right? Um, the whole experience, it was just this cloud coming in and we could, I could see the edge. See, you can see the edge of the cloud in this painting. It's really about right here, but it opened up and you could see the valley. Here, because of the trees, you can't see the edge of the cloud, but that's exactly what happened. So I'm like, I'm excited for this, these paintings. I, I hope this floating thing works. It's like a floating city, right? Maybe that's what was happening when people were like, floating city, whatever. Um, it's really, it was a cloud just releasing and maybe it was metaphorical. Like maybe it was just an artist being like, yo, the city floated, um, you know, good stuff. Uh, I can't talk positively enough about my favorite store there called Ohana. I'm wearing one of their shirts now. It's a cool shirt. There you go, their logo out there. So if you want to like shop someplace that's like supportive of people with disabilities and of differing backgrounds and mask wearing, that's the shop for you in Steam of Colorado. Um, they follow my Biosci Creative Instagram, and uh, yeah, they're just like sane people, so it was great to see them um, and, and stop in and buy things. Um, today's packed. Look, I gotta be honest, you guys, my schedule's about to get cray cray. In two weeks, um, I will be teaching all of the Uncharted classes for a little bit. I've got some people that have some health stuff, they need to go out for a bit, so I'm gonna be doing that. Um, Maybe in the next two weeks, I'll be able to make my stream longer. But after those two weeks, I'm going to have to stick to probably really harshly an hour time limit. Um, it'll still be like, you know, the same schedule and stuff. It's just I'm going to have to stick because I'm going to have to go teach my freaking class um, on Wednesdays. So, um, you know, <laughs> if you if you have a way to send energy uh, through the inner tubes, do that. Um, it's just a change I'm looking at probably that will happen. I don't 100% know yet because I was just getting this information last night. Um, so yeah, just so you know, people have health stuff and they got to take care of it. So I've got, I've already got someone out with surgery recovery. So, um, now I'm going to have two people out with surgery recovery. So it means I have to do everything. It's okay. Um, it's my company. That's what I signed up for. But, um, just a little challenge, a little challenge coming up. I really got to find more people to work for me. Um, you know, there's some challenges being a business owner right now, right? All my contracts for the rest of the school year are pretty much set at the $15 price point for every student that signs up per hour, which is really great. Um, but you know, wages just in the last three months have gone up considerably. So for me to get good workers, I'm going to have to up my prices considerably. <laughs> and I can't do that on my current contracts. So, um, yeah, you know, just little businessy things you got to think about when you own a business. Um, you know, whatever. 
<laughs> uh, what else do I have going on? I went skiing Saturday at Killington. Um, they made 10 more feet of snow, I think, since I was last there, which is cool, except for when the wind blows it all off, suddenly it's an ice mound and it's not fun to ski. And they grade their slopes a lot differently than Steamboat. Um, they do like blacks as steepness grades, not challenge grades. And you can be going down a not so challenging steep run, but it's called a black. Or you can be going down a green or a blue that's full of giant moguls and your knees are killing you. Um, you know, so my knees are killing me. Uh, <laughs> uh, as we tried to find the uh, routes down the mountain that would hurt my knees at least. But it was still a delightful time of skiing. I think for the first time in my life, I was the warm one and I gave my partner warmers because I saw the weather and I was like, this is going to be freaking cold. Um, and I dressed really well. So, um, that, that was fun. And then, you know, stopping to see my partner's great grandfather who lives in the area. Um, and that kind of stuff, delightfulness, delightfulness, happiness. Um, yeah, I bet it is in the 60s actually today i think it's in the 40s like a lot of things are melting oh here it is i did my part to help with the melt around in new england you're welcome on monday i spent an hour with what is essentially a giant ice pick stabbing at the ice around my gate so that when people came in they could um not slip or so that i could not slip um so of course everything started to melt and i didn't need to do that but yeah i have this giant what's it what is essentially an ice pick and we just rawr, um, and break up all the rice and move it out of the way. Um, ooh, and, oh, oh, I don't know. I can't mention that right now. I don't have enough information. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Future conversations. I'm going to put my sweater on, though, because I'm getting a sneak cold. Um, and I got to, like, go to the grocery store, pick up pharmaceuticals, come back for a meeting, come back for teaching, come back for, oh, my life is about to get crazy. Ice sculpting? No, 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 no. No, I just took a giant, like, um, gi a human-sized ice pick to my sidewalk uh, to break up the ice. Those of you that don't live in, like, New England conditions may not be aware that that's a thing you have to do. Um, just saying. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm in my final minute. Uh, I'm so glad you signed on and said hello. Uh, I miss you. I'm glad to be back. We'll see how crazy my life gets over the next few months. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Peace, love, and science, as always.